Hello dentist, how are you today? I hope you're fine. Today we're going to talk about calcareous deposition on teeth, okay? We're going to talk about definition of cal uh, calculus, composition of calculus, types of calculus, and finally formation of calculus. Before we start our topic today, I want you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more videos. So let's start with the calculus. What is calculus? So calculus, calculus is a, is a, uh, calcified deposit found on teeth and is formed by mineralization of plaque deposits. So as you can see here, this, uh, can you see this uh, yellowish creamy uh, calcified deposit? Okay, it's placed on, it's formed on the uh, lower anterior teeth lingually. Normally, it's found uh, in lower anterior teeth lingually because the, due to inaccessibility, uh, patients will not be able to uh, access uh, clean, clean properly lingually, okay, by the brush, with the brush. Okay, so here again, this is another picture we have here. This is the calculus, okay, surrounding uh, the tooth uh, structure, okay. This may lead to recession of the gums. This may lead to recession of the gums, okay, and uh, bone resorption. So here we have here, this is a dental plaque. Okay, let's go to the next. Let's start with the definition of calculus and the types. So it is uh, uh, calculus is, uh, it is a calcified deposit found on the teeth and is formed by mineralization of the plaque deposits. The mineral content of the supragingival calculus derives from the saliva, so it comes from the saliva. While that for uh, that for subgingival is formed from the gingival cervical fluid, it can be subdivided into supragingival calculus and subgingival calculus. So let's start with the supragingival calculus. It's most often found opposite to the opening of the salivary duct and on the lingual surface of lower anterior teeth, as we saw before in the picture, and opposite to the mandibular or sublingual duct. It is creamy colored and it can become stained uh, uh, by a variety of stained uh, by a variety of colors okay according to if the patient drinks tea coffee whatever the type of food he's eating okay may affect the color of calculus okay let's go to subgingival calculus subgingival calculus is found not uh, surprisingly underneath the gingival margin and is firmly attached to the tooth roots it tends to be brown or black and is extremely tenacious and is most often found on the interproximal and lingual surfaces it may be uh, identified visually by touch using a probe or on radiographs it is associated with subsequent uh, periodontitis so with gingival recession and it can become supragingival. So subgingival calculus may turn, may become supragingival calculus, okay? Okay, next, composition. Let's talk about the composition of calculus. Okay, here we have, uh, this is an ultrasonic scaler, okay? So uh, this, uh, the calculus is removed by using an ultrasonic scaler or a hand uh, scaler. Hand scalers uh, could be uh, different types, okay? We have uh, scalers for anterior teeth and scalers for posterior teeth, and then we have a universal scaler which is used for anterior and posterior teeth for better accessibility, okay? Uh, of course, uh, ultrasonic scaler is very good and very fast in uh, cleaning the uh, calculus, okay? Composition, composition consists of 80% uh, uh, up to 80% inorganic salts, mostly crystalline, the major components being calcium and phosphorus. So the major components are calcium and phosphorus. The microscopic structure is basically that of a randomly oriented crystal formation. There are different morphological types octacalcium phosphate hydroxyapatite white loctite uh, brush uh, uh, brushite and so on okay so now we talked about the composition let's go to the formation of calculus formation is always preceded by plaque deposition the plaque serving uh, the plaque serving as a 
uh, organic matrix for subsequent mineralization. Initially, the matrix become between the organisms become calcified with or e and uh, eventually the organisms themselves become mineralized. Uh, Subgingival calculus usually takes many months to be formed, while the supragingival calculus may form within two weeks. Okay, so uh, it's very important to know these uh, important points in order to help you with the di uh, with the um, uh, diagnosis of the case. Okay. So uh, I hope uh, today's topic was interesting. Okay, and. Uh, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more videos see you later in another new video and have a good day bye for now